Hello guys and welcome to a new video. In this video we'll be looking to see if it's easy to cool a 7800X3D CPU with air or it's better to go with an AIO. This CPU doesn't consume a lot of power but because of its big L3 cache it needs a beefy cooler in order to keep it under wraps. Reaching a top frequency of 5050MHz this CPU needs to be under 89 degrees in order to not thermal throttle. The AIO that I'm going to test is Arctic Liquid Freezer 2, the 200 80 version. I have this one for some time now and I know that performs quite well using this CPU. This all-in-one water cooler comes with two P14 fans and a wider than usual radiator. Most other radiators have a thickness of 25 millimeters but this one has 28. Also Arctic is using its own design when it comes to the pump. The tubing is 45 centimeters and integrates the power plug. The water cooler comes with a VRM fan that helps lowering a bit the temperatures. As you can be seen I have it installed in the front with the tubes on the bottom and the radiator fans used as intake. Given the radiator thickness and the fans, I was unable to mount it on the top. Now let's check the contenders. The first one will be the Phantom Spirit 120SE and the Peerless Assassin 120SE RGB, both from Thermorite. These RGB fans can be connected to the motherboard in order to control the lightning. It's quite easy to change them and set custom colors. The Phantom Spirit version that I tested is without RGB. Keep in mind that these two CPU coolers have different fans. The fans on the Peerless Assassin are louder than the ones on the Phantom Spirit. Both CPU fans have instruction and installation parts for the latest platforms from Intel and AMD. The other difference between these two CPU coolers is that the Phantom Spirit comes with 7 heat pipes and the Peerless Assassin has only 6. Having more usually means lowering the CPU temperatures, but not by much. All these CPU coolers were installed and tested in the Lian Li Lancool Mesh 2 PC case. Let's move to the air cooler installation part. After installing the support brackets, make sure sure to put thermal paste on the CPU. Very important, don't forget to peel the sticker on the contact plate with the CPU. What you see now on the screen was a bit trickier. I had to perfectly align the screws on the radiator with the ones on the brackets. Once aligned, make sure that they are not putting too much pressure on one side. Make sure that after a few turns, you change the bracket from top to bottom and vice versa. After this, you have to install the CPU fans. The way that I install them, they are actually pushing air towards the back of the case. I first installed the CPU fan between the two radiators. I made sure that it goes almost to the bottom and I applied a bit of force to clip the fan to the radiator. I did the same for the fan on the front. The installation process is the same as for the other fan. There is no difference whatsoever. For testing, I will be using the two RTX P14 from the water cooler. These fans will be the main ones to provide fresh air to the CPU cooler. I did try the TL P14 from Thermolite. On paper they are better than the P14s, but they are too loud and they perform a bit worse than the P14. In my testing I observed a 0.3 improvement when we used the RTX. As I'm not going to test in open bench, I actually used a custom fan curve. This was used as well for the water cooler. These are tailored for my needs. Let me show you the fan curves that I set. This one is for the GPU fans, those underneath the GPU. This one is for, for the CPU fan. It resembles the turbo setting in BIOS. This one I use it for the two 140mm front intake fans. This one is for the rear and top 120mm exhaust fans. And the last one is the one for the 120mm intake fan that sits below the two 140mm. And now let me show you the curve fans in action. This is a CPU stress in CPU Z. And these are the speeds that the fan spins when the CPU is pushed to the max. Now let me show you the PC case fan setup. I have two beneath the GPU that provide cool air to the GPU, three fans that remove hot air from the case. These exhaust the hot air coming from the CPU. When it comes to CPU fans installation, I checked with low profile DDR5 and with normal profile. I didn't see any benefit when going with the lower profile memory. When it comes to temperatures, the testing results are with the lower profile kit. And lastly, this is the front intake setup. Two P14 and one P12. This provides enough air for the CPU to cool. I must confess that I was expecting lower temperature when using the lower profile kits, but that was not the case with both CPU coolers. I will be using these kits to do some testing when it comes to memory scaling on the 7800 
100 X3D. Let's move to the results. For testing, I used the constant temperature 23.5 using my AEC. Everything was done inside the closed case. As you can be seen in this chart, the frequency is more or less the same for every cooler. This is why we don't have benchmark results scores, as the results are based on frequency sustained during the run. When it comes to air coolers, we have a winner, and that is the Phantom Spirit. The extra heat pipe helps a bit, and also maybe the fans as they are not RGB. The average temperatures are around 1 degree better for the Phantom Spirit, but both CPU coolers managed to keep the 7800X3D chip under 89 degrees. When pitting the Phantom Spirit against the Arctic Liquid Freezer, we can see that it loses, but not by much. We have averages of 78.5 in Cinebench and 80.3 for the Phantom Spirit, so less than 2 degrees difference. When it comes to CPU Z, we have 76.6 for the Arctic Liquid Freezer and 78.9 for the Phantom Spirit. Comparing the Liquid Freezer with the Peerless Assassin, we see that the average temperatures for the Peerless Assassin are below the max temperatures achieved by the Liquid Freezer. The average temperatures difference is more than 2 degrees. These temperatures are quite good given the thermal throttle temperature for the 7800X3D is 89 degrees. Now let's see what's happening when we don't have a control temperature in the room. With the 26 degree room temperature, we see that the Arctic Liquid Freezer managed to reach an 85.6 degrees, but it quickly lowered the temperature to around 84 83. The Peerless Assassin was the worst. It was reaching close to 88 degrees when running Cinebench, and the Phantom Spirit was not far behind the Peerless Assassin, but no CPU thermototo was observed using these high temperatures. Let's look at some games. I'll be showing temperatures with uncontrolled temperatures. This will demonstrate that these CPU coolers can handle gaming without any issue. Because of this, you will not be able to see the same temperature for every cooler, as it was impossible to do that. I didn't use control temperature because every fan has its own fan curve, meaning that they spin differently at different temperatures, as these coolers don't use the same fans. So having minor room temperature differences, the liquid freezer performs better than air coolers, and this is normal. Air coolers tend to be very sensitive to the room temperature. As you can be seen on the screen, the higher the room temperature, the higher the CPU temps, and it's no escaping that. This applies as well to water coolers, but the performance delta between high temperatures and low temperatures in the room using a water cooler is not that high, at least compared to air coolers. They perform a bit better because the surface of the radar, most of the time, it's a lot bigger than the ones on the air coolers, and this helps with cooling them. Add liquid in the mix and these don't need to work that hard in order to maintain lower temperatures using lower fan speeds, and this is why in most cases air coolers perform a bit worse than water coolers. The bigger the surface of the radiator, the cooler the CPU will be. Don't forget that there are air coolers that can house 140mm fans, those should perform better at lower temperatures. The reason why you should consider CPU coolers with 120mm CPU fans is that they are cheaper and they can fit in most cases. Granted, these ones that I tested are quite big, but 45 euros it's really cheap, at least given its performance. Given there is no price difference between the two air coolers, the Phantom Spirit is a lot better. It's cooler, quieter and performs close to the water cooler, at least pushed to the max. Now, no, the liquid freezer is a better choice, at least when it comes to cooling, but the price is more than twice than the other coolers, and not all cases can fit this cooler. So what are the advantages of going with a water cooler? First, the liquid freezer is a lot quieter. In games, it provides lower temperatures. You can use any type of memory and see the RGB on them, but it has these advantages as well. This kind of pumps have a finite life, and I would not advise to keep them after warranty, as these tend to lose liquid through micro fissures in the tubing, which will lead to lower performance down the road, meaning years, and the worst case scenario could be that the tubing breaks and you have leakages all over your components, but this is highly unlikely. Now when it comes to air coolers, they have also some advantages. They are low maintenance, there isn't anything that can break except the fans, and if they break, nothing gonna happen. You will have just to replace the fans with better ones. When it comes to these advantages, you need to be careful of RAM clearance, as usually high profile memories are no go. They are quite heavy and that uh, weight pressure is applied on a small area of your motherboard and nothing else. When it comes to performance between the two air coolers, I would go with Phantom Spirit, as these are at the same price. The fans that come with the Phantom Spirit are a lot quieter compared to the ones on the Peerless Assassin, but if you want quiet, these are not the ones. You will need to look elsewhere or change the fans. So the conclusion is that the 7800X3D 
automatic chip can be cooled by air coolers, and Thermalite has great products, with the Pillars Assassin a bit behind the Phantom Spirit. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.